I understand it that your father uh, introduced you at, at one point. Um, I had read to uh, Paul Robeson. Oh well, as a person, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Well, he went to. to uh, they used to hop bells at Narragansett Pier in Rhode Island during the summers when he was in Howard and, and uh, Paul was in uh, Rutgers. And so they met, and they were alphas, and so they met then. And so Robeson was always a hero in our household you know, during his uh, performance and even prior to his political stand when I became really interested in him. Uh, when I was in Wisconsin, he and Uta Hogg and Jose Ferrer and their company came to play Othello right there in the uh, Union Theater right next to where I live. And we had just finished studying Othello in English class. And oh, that was a thrill because now I, the, the whole thing was right on my tongue. I understood it. There they were doing it. You know, and that, was, that was a great experience for her. What kind of, what, what, I mean, to be in the presence of what kind of person, what kind of uh, aura did Paul Robeson, you know, project? Terrific. You know, that's uh, an aura, a presence. And when he'd come in and just say hello, his voice would be so, you know, this great, rich voice, you know, and it was marvelous. He, when I uh, really got to know him was later in, as I became politically uh, conscious and aware, that uh, he would come to town and um, make arrangements to talk to young intellectuals, to young writers and actors urge us to use our talents to uh, the benefit of our people and to the benefit of humanity and not just for personal aggrandizement. Um, he was very inspirational that way. One time, the hippest thing that ever happened with me, with him, with him I ran for the state legislature when I was 22 years old. And uh, I was 21 during most of the campaign there. Anyhow, he came and did a youth rally for me, for my campaign on uh, 56th in Indiana in a little church down in the basement. And there was this great man talking to us. And he made this marvelous speech about the uh, similarity of the music of oppressed peoples, how they sang in, in minor keys. And he gave illustrations of the Volga boatmen and the Russian, uh, you know, and of uh, uh, Jewish uh, in Eastern Europe and of the blues, and he could tie all that together. And he talked about the commonality of language, how certain languages use tonality in order to change the meaning of words, and the similarity of Chinese dialects and African dialects in that respect, and he could illustrate that. Just terrific, you know. Uh, he was, uh, it was always great to see him, whether you saw him in a big crowd or just, you know, up close. Last time I saw him was at Ishmael Flory's house. Uh, Ishmael was an uh, outstanding communist who just recently passed away. And uh, Paul had his book, I, uh, Here I Stand. And I had just started writing songs, and I ran up there and sang him some songs. You know, and he, he was impressed, but they weren't the kind of songs that he could sing, that he would sing necessarily. But, but uh, that was the last time I saw him. He signed the book. 